Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another Propaganda Castle with me, host Imperial Dane. Today we'll be talking about putting together your roster of commander, your loadout. Sort of what the basic ideas for putting together a good loadout is. And such, hopefully giving you a sort of better experience with it, hopefully putting together some commanders which you feel might actually result in some better results in your games. Also, a bit of talk about bulletins. So, let's get started. I mean, usually when you put together a set of army commanders, I would usually recommend that you sort of basically go through, you know, well, is there a chance I will actually use all of these abilities? This is my ground rule. Look through them. Don't, you know, think, oh, right, ah, oh, the elephant tank destroyer. Yes, I will get lots of them, and then I will, uh, oh, wait, I don't use actually any of the other crap, you know, again. I mean, don't just go because for something because it has one cool unit in it. I mean, sure, it's a cool unit, but if you know if you don't get the most rest of the most of the rest of the docks, I mean, it's pretty much useless. I mean, then you get nothing out of it really, and ultimately, again, you will play weaker compared to say, an opponent who might chose something you objectively decided to is weaker. But again, you know, he puts together a much hell of a better use of it. So that is very much something to keep in mind when putting together these things. Again, you know, look through and say, is there actually a damn well chance I might actually use every single one of the abilities this commander presents? I mean, this one, which is my primary loadout, I mean, I pretty much have the artillery field officer. Love the guy, so yeah, that's pretty much a guarantee why I will use the cargo trucks. Can be handy, give you a bit of that extra resource boost, 300 manpower, I mean, sure it's a bit pr spicy, but again, has it used its rating run? Pretty much straightforward, yes. Always handy to have. Tiger tank, yes. Always quite handy in different situations. Fragmentation bomb, yes as well. Overall, I can see myself using this doctrine. Mechanized assault, assault on issues that go for them initially. One score, there's sort of give me a bit of an edge there. Mechanized assault group, not always, but there's generally a good chance to say there's some weakness in my opponent's forces and I feel there's a chance I might rush one in without being immediately pu punished by armor. Then, yes, do 3 E. Again, if I face some sort of infantry flip, for example, a lot of shock troopers, maybe yes. Again, I can see myself using it. Light artillery barrage. Yes! Always handy with a light artillery barrage to blow your opponents to smithereens and again, tiger tank. Yes! German mech grenadier group. Yes! Again, partly the same sort of reasoning from uh, the mechanized assault group. Smoke bombs. Handy for covering up an assault or retreat. In particular, retreat with infantry in a long column. Great stuff. Spotting scopes on your stooks. Makes them worth even more. But also other panzers, for example. Like artillery how a roll. Also, yes, though not a huge artillery fan, but still occasionally they do have their worth. Command tank, yes. Makes my troops tougher. Depending on the situation again, also good at blowing up infantry. So overall, I mean, I can see myself using all of these. On the other hand, for example, I might not see myself, you know, so strong with the Luftwaffe supply because overall, for example, the corn's there. The first two, I'm sort of like, you know, there's a chance it might hand up in my opponent's hands, and I'm not exactly a huge fan of that. So that really leaves me, for example, a bit more less certain of going for that one. And then say, you know, something like Spearhead, which overall looks pretty great, but at the same time, you know, more half tech looks great, but you know, I'd rather have this, for example, or this. Same with this one, also, for example, it's rather heavy on munitions, and I'd rather prefer something a bit more balanced, not just all munitions abilities, but even then, I mean, looking good, but... I mean, that requires munitions cast, and that might not be always something I get. So, I mean, and those sorts of things are good to keep in mind when putting together your commanders. Your roster of commanders. This one also, certainly fun, but again, you know, I like this stuff more. And of course, we come to the bulletins. What sort of bulletins might favour you? Overall, my personal preference lies towards bulletins that give my troops more experience. Because overall, that's something that actually matters. More overall, I mean, if you get 10% experience from every kill, again, I mean, that's quickly going to accumulate into a unit that vets up considerably faster than one without this. Which, for me, you know, makes considerable difference compared to, say, for example, this. Wow, my Panzer files cost 4% less. What is 4% of 35? Oh, right. Practically nothing. So again, for example, a lot of these bulletins ultimately, you know, do bollocks. I mean, for example, this one, you know, for example, is actually a bit worth it because, you know, 3% accuracy, but again, yes, all of my men get it, so overall, again, that's a bit more of an increase because, again, it's across an entire squad of these gentlemen, for example, also with this one. That might be a bit of an effect, though, statistically, I'm not entirely sure how to approach it, so I'm not going to make any predictions 
I'm pretty sure it's not going to result in a 15% accuracy increase overall for the entire squad, of course. I mean, that would be silly. And again, I mean, you fuck some to see it here, you know, with the line for my stooks, because again, you know, I love using my stooks, and again, that's another rule, you know. Get the bullets in for the units you know you'll use the most. Get the most out of it, I'm going to have a machine gun. Oh, hey, 10% experience bonus as well. And that's going to help me get a quick up to vet 2, perhaps even vet 3, and vet 1, for example, with the incendiary armor piercing rounds of doom. So then again, is a little thing you might want to keep in mind, you know, when thinking through. And again, Sturmgeschutz. Yeah, five percent faster instant gain. That's great. And again, for example, you know, reload time three percent. And that's not even going to matter now, is it? No. Perhaps you know, once in a hundred shots. Yay, my Stug slot shot slightly faster, but for the Stug three E in any engagement, it's not going to have an effect. And those are the sort of things you have to sort of keep in mind. Again, yes, a lot of the bullets in here really don't matter, but again, the experienced ones, they do. They can again come back to because again it's something that accumulates through experience, which intends to be in larger numbers, for example, for armor. I mean, that's usually not something, oh, hey, I just got the 500 experience. Oh, wait, all of a sudden I got 25 experience more. So, again, not a huge deal, but you know, every little drop matters when it comes to getting your tanks up to veterans 1, 2, and 3 faster. So, for example, if you're the gentleman that likes, you know, using the Panzer 4 a lot, you know, get it. Get it very much. Although, of course, again, you know, you might give your opponent an indicator once the game loads up what you're going to be going for, so, you know. Or that, again, you know, some things. And this one, for example, is actually rather interesting. That it actually gives your troops your flak pounds of false suppression. So, I might actually go for that one if you actually have it so far, though. I'm not a huge flak pounds user, though, so, again, not really getting anywhere with it. But if you haven't, you know, it might work. And again, ooh, four percent weapon penetration. Then remember, it has about a hundred and twenty penetration. And then, oh, right, that's not impressive either. So again, you know, those little things good to keep in mind. Good to keep in mind. For example, this one, ooh, good. This one, ah, uh, not much. And of course, we have something a bit more interesting with the Soviets. Also, for example, this one again, you know, I like, you know, mines. So, again, 10% build a fast time, you know, means there's a less likely chance of being caught while putting down the mines, which, you know, adds a lot to the surprise. But of course, we also get a bunch here for the doctrinal units. Again, 10% depression. A bit of increased accuracy, again, might pay off a bit in the longer run. Same here with the increased accuracy. Penetration, hmm, but then again, might work with a bit bonus. Again, I'm not entirely sure with these things. <laughs> But overall, again, for example, I mean, if you are going to go for these again, I mean, also make sure you actually, for example, got the doctrines for it. I mean, if you're the search, for example, I mean, you might say, oh, I, you know, I want the guards doctrine here because I want them to be all accurate, including with the light machine guns. Great! Then you usually want to at least have more than one because then you can sort of take advantage of it no matter what way it goes. Then all of a sudden you're perhaps standing a lot better than you were previously, for example. Also, of course, as the Soviets, there's a slightly interesting advantage you can pull off here, because, again, for example, again, there are a lot of units that sort of repeat, and you might say, oh, well, that's boring, but at the same time, it also makes you a lot bloody harder to predict what you're going for, because, again, you call in the guard's riflemen, your opponent sort of remembers, well, now then, what did this gentleman have in his commander roster? And then he remembers, he had guard motor, guard rifle, it was so combined, oh, shit, I don't know anything about the doctrine he just chose, compared to saying, for example, again, you know, we have this, and we have this again, you know, I go guard's rifleman, and there's, oh, right, he then went guard motor coordination tactics, again, it's probably not something that registers with every single god damn player, certainly, but at the same time, you know, it might have a slight effect, again, for some, I mean, so now I pay attention, this and I sort of try and deduct, you know, what doctrine could my opponent have gone? What do I think? And again, I try to remember what you had, and then, of course, look at what he calls in. In that regard, you know, there are some things that sort of keep in mind, because, again, the faster you know, the faster you can sort of take countermeasures. Of course, something like mech and assault going up with the mech, the assault guns right away, of course, rather shaves your hand. But at the same time, you know, with others, you might be able to keep your opponent a bit of kilter with it. So those are some things you could sort of can try and keep in mind when putting together your commander rosters, your loadouts, commanders and bulletins, what sort of things do you like, and so on. So hopefully these few little ideas and rules of thumb might help you put together a nice commander roster. And again, the rule of thumb here, one of the prime ones again, 
go for what works for you, go for what you like, and also what you use. Don't go for what everybody else uses just because they use it, because again, what works for them doesn't necessarily work for you. I mean, if you're the sort of gentleman who actually somehow gets something out of your combined arms army compared to others who might not, you know, again, go for it. Same with partisans. I mean, some don't get any value, but again, if you do, great, go for it. Make the most out of it. Make it your specialty, even. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with that. Again, you know, keep that in mind, and don't be afraid to also sort of experiment sometimes, you know, just for the fun of it, throwing in another command, because it does, so sometimes, doesn't hurt to try something new, and sort of try out some different ideas, you know, just occasionally. Try something new and get a, perhaps a better experience of some other things and some new strategies and tactics. So, this was the propaganda cast level for today, but, you know, the less than usual stuff, again, more focus on commanders and such, but hopefully some people learn from this. I have one person actually asking for this, so I think, you know, why not? Let's see what happens, and again, you know, hopefully people respond positively to this, hopefully they've learned something from this. If they did, you know, feel great, share with it, subscribe, all that, and of course let me know in the comments. Anyways, this is Imperial Dane saying cheers.